there everybody, this is TJ Fowler for Skullbanger Media. I am here with Andy and Michael of Halloween, and uh, they've taken the time to uh, be good enough to answer some questions. Uh, they're here in Helsinki, Finland to promote their new album coming out in May, correct? Exactly. Uh, my God-given right. So, without further ado, guys, let's talk about the new album. How you, first of all, how you doing? I know it's, uh, you guys, uh, Actually, I for, get out of here. <laughs> for, for the circumstances, quite okay. <laughs> great, great. Uh, you know, we, 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 we could have uh, helped, you know, like with a better interviewer, but apart from that. <laughs> well, you know, when you, when you come from the Cumberland Gap in Tennessee, you got to deal with what you get, fellas. <laughs> but, uh, well, yes, yeah, so, like I said, My God Given Rights coming out in May. This also marks your 30th anniversary year as well. And, uh, Kind of, I listened to My God Given Right, and you, you guys kind of decided to kind of go a little bit more, I say retro or 80s, a little bit with it, but it doesn't sound like you're trapped as an 80s sound. You, got, you still got some progressive yep. elements and things like that. So, can you tell me uh, the decision to kind of go back to your roots a little bit on this one as compared to your previous albums, which are a little bit more progressive mm. and things like that? Well, first of all, certainly to to more or less satisfy the old farts than than our generation. So, all the blokes between forty and sixty, <laughs> <laughs> um, they they all kind of hang with their ears since uh, still in the eighties sound. So, nowadays you have to take care a little bit because the digital domain doesn't do a good job on the eighties sound. Because during the eighties we had the pleasure to record analog. Yes. And uh, analog means you can record a guitar brutally and the tape flattens it. Sure. Nowadays in the digital domain, the guitar just sounds horrible. Yeah. So fortunately, our producer, Charlie, he invested kind of three Mercedes Benz <laughs> <laughs> into analog gear. Okay. Uh, in, in, in what equipment exactly, by the way? Well, that was API stuff, like compressors, mag pre's. And uh, probably the main weapon was the so-called Levery uh, AD converter. Okay. This is uh, in itself probably a Mercedes-Benz. <laughs> <laughs> just just uh, analog digital conversion of stereo signals. Okay. Um, but does such a great job because it sounds like a real tape machine. Well, yeah, really your, cool. your very first track when it starts mm. at the very beginning, first few seconds, it really sounds really like analog, analog yeah. and then you kind of you kind of change yeah. it a little bit, but. Um, and that's what I want to talk to you about next is your, is your producer. Um, I was really struck by the sound of the album. Uh, I'll admit when I first listened to it, I, I've got some cheap headphones. And I don't think you have to have big expensive gear to listen to this album because I use my girlfriend's and hers headphones ain't expensive either. But they go around your ears and you can hear right. everything. And once I did that, the album really shined. It mm. really shined a lot. So. Uh, I didn't find in the press release who the producer was, but... Uh, As always, Charlie. Yeah. Charlie Bauerfeind, who is our producer since the Dark Ride in the year 2000. Okay, okay. So, long time bloke. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I was really impressed with how he did the sound on this album. He just kind of mentioned you went back and got some analog sound mm -hmm. stuff. So, it, it, is he a, a producer that's uh, really good about using all kinds of different tricks on, on albums? Like, this one's obviously got an analog sound mm -hmm. that he's used. No, actually not. Actually not. Um, you have to admit that he's he's a, a perfect producer in the Pro Tools digital domain. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, he was sick of, of of all the shit going down in the digital domain when it comes to guitar. So, it's probably perfect to 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 record digital music nearly in every genre. But it becomes nasty with metal music, yeah. because in metal you want to have these over distorted, really like brutal guitars, mm -hmm. which means the frequencies have to be nearly ear hurting yeah but it's it's a difference between positive ear hurting and negative ear hurting because it just gets it sometimes gets on your nerves in the digital domain because it's it's so brutal it's so it's not nice the frequencies yeah. and this is what the tape actually kind of eradicated mm -hmm. so you there was no chance to listen to a brutal guitar on tape which was not to the same time fantastic sounding without getting on your nerves sure you know so you were not tired after listening 50 minutes music with that sound, though yes. it was brutal, but you never—it was not tiring. Nowadays, with the digital shit, it's—it's it's, you're getting tired after ten minutes already, you know. And I, I've noticed that too. It sounds like with the, well, with the analog stuff, it sounds more warmer, sounds more organic. Yeah. And I think my God-given right really captures that essence a lot. You sound yeah. really good on the album. 
Brilliant. Well, he did a, he did a fantastic job on there. Actually, you're allowed to to even tweak up the guitars a little bit more yeah. to make them even a bit brighter. Yeah. Uh, because they are not so tiring. Sure. If you just would do it in the digital domain, you can't do that. Yeah. It's people would go like, well, that sounds sound, <laughs> sounds bad. You know? Sure, sure. Well, now um, I listen to the album. Uh, you guys have known. For, uh, for your sense of humor here and there yeah. on some songs, just just a little. Sense. Oh yeah, <laughs> just, 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 a, just a little. <laughs> but uh, one of the songs that I really liked that I thought was um, it, it was kind of funny was uh, "Lost in America." Mm. Okay, and it sounds like to me that song's got some sort of a story. A true story. Story. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about this? Story? Well, uh, actually, I should should take care here because oh. otherwise the the pilot of that certain flight would probably uh, claim rights to the title. <laughs> Because this was his own words, where like we are probably lost here in America. Oh. <laughs> so um, the the whole story is that we had to wait 17 hours at the airport because they finally decided, from one second to the other, to make a flight show, as if they would not know months before that they do a flight show. It was in Belize, in America, South America. So suddenly all all the flights cancelled, thousands of passengers without flight, the airport like angry as you may imagine, yeah. and. Uh, and we were worried about catching the next show in Sao Paulo. So anyway, we started drinking. Yes. So after 17 hours, finally, we hit the plane. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, direction Sao Paulo. Now, you have to imagine, we were, we were already airborne for two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, the captain made his speech. Like, uh, yeah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we have a problem here. Uh, the gauges are not really working the way they should and uh, we fear we are not high enough as you can see the gauges don't show it but as you can see when you look out of the window we are not high enough after two and a half hours <laughs> um, actually we can only reckon where we are we don't know exactly we're kind of lost in america <laughs> that's that's when we started to drink even more on the yes. plane. <laughs> i'd be kind of scared <laughs> so so the decision was after two and a half hours uh turn back yeah. because it's still it's still, they were still able to find their way back oh, without that's ages good. that's good you didn't become the leonard standard of uh, heavy metal no fortunately not <laughs> fortunately not yeah. nevertheless we had to go back so sure. we lost kind of another five hours and we had to wait another two hours again yeah. to catch the flight to sao paulo oh, okay Okay, well, that's a pretty interesting story. And then um, we were driven to the hotel by the police, him yeah. and me. Yeah, because yeah. We, we came so late. Actually, the crew, that was the day off for the crew, actually. They spent on the, at, the, at the airport. So uh, we and all they had, didn't sleep a wink. Yeah, they didn't wow. sleep at all. They went directly in Sao Paulo to the concert hall and hook up uh, the gear and everything. Yeah. It was a big thing. I mean, this was a credit card call, like 7,000 people. The yeah. other one, the... Or the, or the, yeah, something like that. And the one, nevertheless, they had to hook up like uh, all these big systems and blah blah blah. So there was a lot of work. And Waiki and I were brought to the hotel directly okay. to catch two hours sleep, and then it was showtime. Wow! Them, so. How do you do it, man? <laughs> Worked down actually okay. Yeah. Yeah, like a dream, as you know, when you only slept two hours, you're like, it's like a movie. Yeah, like it's this. kind of a haze yeah. almost. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Well, that was one of my favorite songs on the album. There's some other ones like Russian Roulette mm. and some other ones. But uh, what about you guys? Is there any certain songs on here that kind of struck with you a little bit more than normal? Well, no, all of them. <laughs> They're all the greatest. <laughs> all of them. I, I had my doubts about the material, you know, if it was heavy enough. Or yeah. I, I thought maybe, you know, it's, it's all a bit too harmless yeah. or something. Uh, not because of Lost in America or whatever, sure. but like the general vibe. And then when I heard the combined material during the presentation, I was uh, I was relaxed, you know. I was great. like, ah, oh, okay, yeah, great, awesome. yeah, it's gonna work. So far, I could only rely on like what Charlie said. No? Mm -hmm. He said like, no, no, it's gonna be great, oh, good, good, good album. <laughs> you know? No, but he he had already the master plan that he would push up the guitars a little bit more sure. than usually because of these yeah. frequencies we fortunately don't hear anymore. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, then certainly it sounds much harder than the material yes. actually would be if yeah. you take back the guitars. But then again, we're talking about metal music. If you take back the guitars from metal music, what, what do you got? So, <laughs> That's you supposed know, to be so. the thing, yeah. <laughs> so, well, cool. Well, I guess we kind of touched on this a little bit already, but uh, I'll ask in your personal opinions. Uh, what do you think, my God-given right, what, what is it 
what special thing do you think this album has com that sets it apart or makes it different, say, compared to your previous releases? Mm. It's more open, it's more accessible, it's more positive, yeah. it's more friendly, mm. it's and harmless, I didn't want to say. You know? <laughs> no, friendly, friendly to the point when it comes to songs like, like uh, Claws or, or The Swing of a Fallen World or You're Still a War. <laughs> yeah. Then it's not so friendly at all. Sure. But as always, we felt like the need of having at least two, three tracks who, who kind of bring you away from the typical happy, happy Halloween metal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is always great. But uh, me personally, I say I would enjoy much more. Halloween in the, in the in the happy vibe. If there is from time to time a, a bad song between it, you know, sure, sure, to bring you into a different mood, and then you're 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 ready for the happy happy shit again. Uh -huh. you know? But uh, I would not like to listen to an album which goes like 15 minutes through the oh the world is so great happy oh, happy yeah. shit, you know, because that would not reflect the truth, you know. Sure, sure. Yeah. And when I heard the culmination of everything, I thought housewives may buy this. You know, fans like you know who metal. yeah they, they they have like best of scorpions and and oh, whatever, okay that's what you, you mean know. okay i'll probably listen listen to one like, song you know yeah. what halloween album do i get you know and then i was getting afraid i was so <laughs> i was thinking you know what happens if this is the pinnacle of everything well, that's yeah. probably yeah. the same story then with the Scorpions. Everybody <laughs> buys buys the album because of Wind of Change, right. and then they listen to the rest of the album and go like, "Oh, oh, oh the devil, the devil!" You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I was thinking more in the line of like, "Okay, you know, what Halloween album do I get? That one." <laughs> and then I was thinking White Album because uh, it reminded me of like I've always been afraid of the White Album of the Beatles because I always thought, you know. You can't deal with that. You're probably still too small. You're like a teeny. Uh, you're you're too young. You won't understand what they're celebrating on the white album because the way it looked, you know, yeah. like. And then there was the gold sticker on it. It said like German um, record price hmm. mm. for best so selling and, and best produced and best 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 whatever best. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not ripe for that, you know. <laughs> so it was basically the the last album I ever got of the Beatles. Really? And so I was thinking white album, what if, right? And then, you know, they came up with that white album cover concept, you know? Yeah. I was like, what a freaking coincidence. Sure. I didn't tell anyone about it. Well, well I, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I said yeah. like you white, did, white did, album yeah. somehow. <laughs> and, but I didn't know the uh, cover concept yet. Sure. That came out one or two weeks later. And then I was like, there you go, white album, right? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. You know, with nothing intended here, right? I don't want to compare uh, ourselves, you know, to the geniuses of the Beatles they were. John Lennon of Halloween right here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> right, and right, Andy right. with the Beatles t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Even, even got my John Lennon glasses in my, in my luggage, right? <laughs> well, now, I mentioned at the beginning of the interview, mm -hmm. it's your 30th anniversary this year. And it's kind of fitting that mm -hmm. my, my God-given rights kind of re, a return to roots kind of mm. sound of it now. It kind of fits together. I'm not sure if that was kind of planned for the 30th anniversary. No, it was actually only the, 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 the... We had the challenge to combine the generations we have. Yeah. So as I mentioned already, we have uh, us old farts, like people between 40 and mm -hmm. 60 who grew up with the band, when I even haven't been in the band. And then we have like, fortunately, two new generations. So Great. you have like even 15, 14 year old guys with their parents. Yeah. Even some, I think, another ten years, and they got like standing next to their grandfather, you know, That's right. which is great. Yes, yes, it's always you know. good to do that. I, 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 metal seems to rejuvenate. Absolutely, yeah. but it gives you the challenge to actually try to more or less satisfy them all. That's right. So, but uh, so, do you have any spe special plans for this thirtieth year? No, no, no. Actually, no, zero. <laughs> I think after the the twenty fifth. fifth after the 25th anniversary, there was this goddamn acoustic album we had to record <laughs> for the Sony record. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you know, we were saying, like, as long as we don't have to tour for it, you know, yeah. and then they said, uh, make two shows yeah. oh, somewhere, okay. you know, at, 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 at what was it, at malls and, yeah, and then, whatever, and no things. Then it, then it were like over 30. Uh. Mm, no, was it? Wow, okay. No, yeah, yeah. We had lots of, of these these acoustic shows, and everybody hated it. <laughs> and at the end of the day, then then they asked us, why why do you hate it? I mean, I said, look, everybody I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, then then the question arises, why why the fuck did I in the first place buy an electric guitar? If I would like to do acoustic shit, then I would have bought an acoustic guitar. You idiots, you know. So, 
And you go like, yeah, I mean, this is sellout. I hate or that. came out as someone, you know, who's uh, supposedly doing stuff like that. Yeah. No, like, I don't know, American heroes, you know, <coughs> who played their acoustic guitar stuff, yeah. whatever. But uh, I always think uh, it, it's better, you know, to spend your energy on the regular albums rather than making up celebrations yeah, sure. of Absolutely. each every five years and whatever, you know, that yeah. takes a lot of energy and it takes the energy away from your regular album supposed to be. Yeah, sure. right. That's um, a good, kind of a good philosophy because I know some bands like to really try to, uh, I don't know, that, that's what they focus on later on in their careers. It's mm. just like special collections. And so that's a good attitude to have. Um, well now, are you are you guys familiar with the, um, you got some fan sites on Facebook, Halloween Now and Forever, are you familiar? Are you in knowledge of them? Or? Yeah, I've seen them here and there. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I put a word out saying I'm, I'm getting an interview, got you guys, if any fan wanted any questions, send them my way, I'll cherry pick some out. Yeah. So, uh, one guy, a guy in Scotland, uh, Halil, mm. uh, it, it goes along with the touring question. So I want to ask you about touring. And his specific question was, he lives in Scotland. He says that he doesn't expect you maybe to get to maybe where he's at in Scotland. But uh, do you have any plans for a full-blown UK tour on top of any other tour plans you got going on? No, if we would do that, then the Germans would come and, and ask us to play 18 shows in Germany. And st you can't do that. Sure. I mean, we, we've already been like the longest was 13 months or 14 months even, and the, the the shortest world tour was 11 months. Uh, wow! So <laughs> if you if you if you extend it and and play so many shows in the UK and and then you have to do 18 in Germany, you have to do more here, more there at the end of the day. And it's always years. a matter of the promoter as well and sure. which offer he yeah. makes you. Because like uh, being around in, in the UK is a kind of a hardship for a German band. Uh, if not, you know, you get the support of the promoter who says like, you know, regardless, uh, we're getting everything done and then you go there and get there. And, and we've been to Scotland and we freaking enjoyed it. And mm -hmm. like the, 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 the vast part of the life in the UK is from Edinburgh, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The recordings. And, you know, we would love to, yeah. really. And, and we, we each time we enjoyed being there, except for the first time when he was in the band, you know, <laughs> we were uh, basically doing clean up shows mm -hmm. and like the fans, you know, they really appreciate it so much. You know, he was surprised, we were surprised, but they were small scale. And then we came back for more. And then, you know, it's always like the hardship of exposing yourself to what's there and, and, and the way things are going, sure. right? And it's freaking, uh, because of the VAT and everything, it's, it's freaking expensive. Also, you know, to, 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 to get the venues, the proper venues and stuff. And for that, you need a promoter who's really behind it. And I don't know if, if there's one right now. Sure. And we but still have the one who did the Life in the UK tour, you know, who's actually trying to um, uh, jeopardize what, whatever we would do ah. in the future. Like uh, I heard from like, uh, uh, if you're doing this with them, you know, you, you're not going to get my ex from them and the other oh. way around. And, nice. and I don't nice know nice what's people. true about <laughs> that. Yeah. You know? But if we do, if, if we do Scotland, I'll probably do a, hol a week holiday after it. <laughs> because I promised my lady that when, when we play again in Scotland that I do a, a week holiday because she she loves the highlands. Yeah, right. and, and really, me, I mean... I, me, me, I need to visit the, the islands because I'm Lagavulin fan, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm the whiskey guy here. Great. I see, I see. No, but I mean, uh, I really enjoyed being in Scotland each time. Uh, particularly because I had a Scottish guitar tech. Uh, he, he also built the guitar for, mm. for the very guitarist of the of the Alex Harvey band. Coco. Yeah. Cool guy. He yeah. did the Explorer and other guitars yeah. for, for the guitarist for Zell Clemenson. Okay. Right? Right. Who is Zell Clemenson? Well, the guitarist, the original one of uh, Alex Harvey band. And, and there's other Scottish bands that we love, you know, and sometimes you don't even know they're Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, I got to wrap it up. I got a motion there to, uh, to wrap it up. But before I go, this is something I ask all metal bands and it's something unique. The cliche, quick cliche question? Yes. Okay, shoot. It, it's, <laughs> uh, being from Tennessee, kind of the birthplace of rock and roll. Yes, we love whiskey from Tennessee yeah, too. Jack Daniels, yes. <laughs> I, I, I drink it every, every night before wow. I do the show. 
But uh, Elvis is kind of a big thing oh, in Tennessee. I, I can drink Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> never, never tried it. <laughs> uh, but uh, if Halloween were to do a cover song of, a, of an Elvis song, which which would you prefer to do? It, just hypothetical. I'm not saying to go of, do it. Of an actual Elvis song? An Elvis song. Oh, some spring to mind. Well, Jailhouse Rock would be obvious, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hmm. How the web was woven is not good for metal, but like uh, falling in love with you or whatever, yeah. and and uh, Mama liked the roses, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, it's it's hard to put to contain it in a Halloween song. That yeah. would be difficult. I've been wondering, yeah. you know, what I would love. No, I don't say it. Oh, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> No, no. No? I, I played him Andy Williams' uh, uh, um, Happy Heart. Oh, okay. How'd that go? The other day. <laughs> okay. Which is kind of Elvis, but not. Yeah. Swingy. And, yeah, I don't know. The Big uh, shit. Bridge Over Troubled oh. Water sure. ain't exactly Elvis no. himself because it's... Uh, it's not Elvis. No. Yeah. Well, it would, would probably be a few, but <clears throat> I'd rather see some, some tender, love me tender in, in heavy metal. Yeah. Oh yeah! There you go. There's your one. Right, let me tell you. <laughs> Double bass it okay, up. That's right. High pitch. Like let see, me tell you. I'm right. That's that's so obvious. That's so obvious. I, I wouldn't have gotten the idea. Yeah, okay. That could work. There you go. <laughs> Do it. And it's the, go back to that acoustic. the soul ever own written song of Elvis, isn't it? When we we rewrite it. Uh, the words would be "Love me harder." Yeah. Love me harder. <laughs> Never. I like your style. <laughs> Never let me come. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> well, all right, guys. I know that <laughs> we'll end on that note. What's explicit here? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I know you got a lot of other interviews. I really appreciate the time. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. And this is TJ for Skullbanger.net. <laughs> Andy and Michael. Halloween. Boop.